Welcome to Westbury United Methodist Church. I am, as always, grateful that you have joined together in worship today. Uh, whenever, wherever you are watching, that your spirit is uniting with this church family um, in this moment. And if you are watching this early enough on Sunday morning, August 22nd, then I invite you to come in person to the church. Uh, at 1045, we will have an outdoor blessing of the backpacks. So I invite you to bring your briefcases, your backpacks, whatever you need for school this year, just bring it. And we'll have a time for a short liturgy. We will pray for the instruments of our education as well as for ourselves and for the year ahead. And following that time, we're going to have fellowship. We'll have uh, lawn games. We're going to open the playground. And uh, we're going to have snow cones. So I know my daughters are excited for that. <laughs> so if you're able, if you're watching early enough, come out at 1045. Uh, later today on Sunday at 5 p.m. via Facebook Live, uh, Haitian Assets for Peace International, HAPPY, a group that our church has worked with for years, they're going to be sharing what's happening in their country and how they're enduring through these trials and um, what we might be able to do to help support them. Uh, you can find the link at our church website on our updates page. You should see this below, westburyumc.org backslash updates. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see a link to the Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Another reminder to save the date. Uh, October 8th to 10th, we are hoping to have our all-church retreat at Camp Allen. Uh, yes, October 8th to 10th, so we're hoping it's overnight. Uh, just like we're praying for so many reasons that COVID-19 numbers will fall, we are hoping that by early October, it'll be safe enough to, for us to spend the night in the cabins there. Uh, even if that doesn't happen, you can always come and we are planning to have something that Saturday uh, just for times of games and fellowship and being together in the piney woods of Camp Allen. So save that weekend, October 8th to 10th, uh, so that we can be together. And I think after this year and a half, none of us will ever underestimate the value and treasure of being in one another's presence. Um, so put that on your calendar so we can gather together as a church family and get away for even a day. Um, and that's also a reminder for us to continue to pray for one another, uh, especially as we can't see each other as we had for the past few months. Um, so continue to pray for each other. Go to our church website, look at the prayer list, submit and offer your own prayer request so that we can stay united and, and, and together as a church family. I also invite you to give. Uh, you can find different ways to give online or through the mail or even drop by the church office if that's the best way for you. Um, and of course, we treasure this time each week when our hearts are joined together in worship and we direct ourselves towards God to bringing God our praise, our worship, our hearts. And so now let us unite together our hearts and voices to worship God together. Please join us in our call to worship. Come, come children, children of God, God come and find refuge and strength. Our souls wait for the Lord more than those who watch the morning. Come, heirs, heirs with Christ, come and find forgiveness and joy. Our souls wait for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Come, people of faith, Come to the one who is attentive to our pleas. Our souls wait for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning.
believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we come to the part of our service which reminds us of how important this body of Christ, this community that we have at Westbury UMC is. Uh, we are passing the peace of Christ with one another. And so I invite you to take a moment, think of someone that God has placed upon your heart, and send them a text, write an email. If you have a card, take a moment to write a card or give a phone call, uh, but reach out and share this peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding and share it with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
children's sermon today. Yeah, so um, we're learning about the book of James still. Remember James from last week? Yeah. So James, in his letter, was writing to the Christians and helping them um, to find out how to be Christians, right? What are the things that they should do in order to act like a Christian? Like, how does their faith help them be better people, right? And so one of the things that he tells everyone is that when you are speaking, words are really powerful things, right? Because once you say words, is it easy to, like, take them back? No. No, it can be really hard to take them back, too. Do you want to try an experiment with me? Okay, so first thing you got to do is squeeze all of the toothpaste out of the tube. Onto the thing, preferably, not the carpet. About <laughs> stain. So is it hard to squeeze it out? Or is it kind of easy to squeeze it out? <laughs> Well, since, yeah, it's a little hard. A little hard? And it's a little smelly. It's a little smelly, yeah. There's a lot in that. Oh, wow. We can say a lot of words, can't we? Yeah. I never knew. So, once we say all of these words and we squeeze all of this toothpaste out of the tube, Okay, now can you do the part of the experiment where we put it back into the tube? Uh, absolutely not. No? You don't think it's going to be easy to put it back? Um, can't. Yeah, that's how it is with our words, right? It's a lot easier to say words than it is to take back words. Have you ever had someone <laughs> who said something to you and it hurt your feelings? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do we do when that happens? Like, what do we do when we accidentally hurt we, someone's feelings? So, we... Say sorry. We ask for a, we ask for them to accept our apology, and we ask what can make them better. What can make them better? Yeah. So God knew that we were gonna mess up with our words and with other things too, right? So we have a good way to ask for forgiveness to say I'm sorry, and how can I make it better? And one of the things that God gives us is grace. Right? We always have a second try. Even if we, like, use all of our words and make a big, huge mess, we can always try again and start over, right? Yeah. Are you ready to pray with me? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you so much for giving us wisdom. Thank you so much for giving us wisdom. And thank you for forgiving us. And thank you for forgiving us. When we don't use our words right. When we don't use our words right. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 3 through 12. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are very large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder whenever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a very small part of the body, but makes great boast. Considering a great forest that is set on fire by a small spark, the tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the entire body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and itself on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can be tamed the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Father and our Lord. And with it, we can curse human beings who have been made in God's image. But out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this shall not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or grape tree 
bear figs. Neither can a soft spring produce fresh water. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm reminded of a story I heard a few years ago about a small town grocery and this young man that worked there. He was restocking the shelves when one day an elderly lady came up to him and in a very eccentric tone uh, says, excuse me, excuse me, I just need a half head of lettuce. Now, I see that you have these heads of lettuce over there in a full, uh, full head, but you know, I just need the half. You know, the, the other half just always seems to go bad. I can't ever finish it. Can you sell me just a half? Well, the young man smiles and says, I'm so sorry, ma'am, but I'm afraid we just sell the, the full head. Uh, can I interest you in, in maybe purchasing the full head? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, need, I need just the half head. Uh, can, can you maybe speak with your manager and see if there's a special something that could be done for me? He smiles and says, yes, ma'am. So he walks over to the grocery store manager and says, oh, my. Uh, we, there, there's this lady that has just come up to me and has uh, asked for a half head of lettuce. Can you believe this crazy lady asking for a half head of lettuce? And just at that time, the young man feels a little tap on his shoulder, turns back and sees it's the eccentric lady. And so he very quickly wittedly turns back to his boss and says, oh, but boss, guess what? We are in luck because this lady right here, this beautiful lady, well, she wants to buy the other half. Aren't we in luck? You know, just like this young guy was on his journey to becoming a better grocery clerk, we too are growing in our spiritual lives on our spiritual journey. And the book of James, as we have learned through this sermon series, is teaching us about spiritual maturity. Today's passage focuses on how we can use our words, how we can be peacemakers with our words, how powerful our words are. It's, it's easy for us to forget that our words hold the power to speak direction and guidance for the good. Equally, our words can bring destruction and chaos even when it's God's desire for us to speak life with our words, to encourage one another, to build each other up, to offer words that reflect a worshipful heart set on bringing glory to God in all that we say. Would you pray with me? God, you are the one who spoke light and life into being. You are the one who created our hearts and our minds to bring glory to your name. So today, we take this moment to surrender ourselves before you and ask that we might be a people whose hearts are filled with so much love, patience, and compassion that the overflow of our words would only be that of your light and your life in the example of your son, Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Our words can bring direction. As a master illustrator, the author of the book of James uses these figures of the horse's bit and the ship's rudder to show us the power of the tongue. When a well-placed bit is situated in the mouth of the horse, the horse is so easily guided one way or the other. With the ship's rudder, the same, even in spite of heavy winds that rage around it. The tongue, our words, we have the power to impart wisdom that can change the entire course of someone's life. Oliver Wendell Holmes says, 
A mind once exposed to a new idea can never shrink back to its original size. We hold this power to teach. Our tongues hold the significant power to bring direction in the lives of those around us. It's pretty funny when I hear my friends who have small children, when they share stories, um, when their kids have unexpectedly repeated some words that they have learned at home from their parents. Like little parrots, they soak up all those words and they just say whatever they hear when you least expect it. All the examples I can think of today are a bit too funny for a Sunday morning sermon. But this reminds us that in different seasons of life, we all are teachers. We all are charged with the, beauty, the, the duty to bring direction with our words. Today, we celebrate our teachers and our students through the blessing of the backpacks. Thank you, teachers, for speaking words of direction into the lives of our young people. I hope that each of us can learn to follow your example. And remember that young ears are listening all around us, soaking up the things that we have to say. It's God's desire that we would seek to be a people who speak with words of holy wisdom, to use our words to influence people around us, both young and old, for the good, to listen to God for those moments that we can share a word of wisdom and to impart it with love. Our words can also bring destruction. The author of James uses the idea of fire when he speaks of the power of the tongue, fire. Even now, as devastating fires are consuming Northern California, we know too well how one single spark can grow to engulf so much of God's creation, so much that is beautiful. Mighty trees that have stood for hundreds of years, homes lost in an instant. Have you ever heard the phrase, you can't unring a bell? Forgiveness and reconciliation can do much in the process for replanting and rebuilding after our words have brought consuming destruction. But friends, once hurtful words are spoken, the bell cannot be unrung. It truly cannot be unheard. Let's take a moment to reflect together. I want to invite you to pause and hear with me, think about something. What was the most hurtful thing, the most painful thing that you remember was ever spoken to you or about you? Now, let me ask this question. Would you be a different person had you never heard those words? Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. How is it that those certain people in our lives, past and present, so often fail to understand that their words can bring such destruction, can bring such pain. How is it that you and I sometimes miss the mark here too? As a child, 
I remember the Smokey Bear ads that would come on television and would be printed in the newspapers. I grew up in Central Texas. We didn't even have forests around my hometown, but I knew that phrase. You could probably say it with me. Only you can prevent forest fires. From time to time, we are tempted to say things we know we shouldn't. May it be small, exaggeration, or a little bit of gossip, or a bit larger by not telling the truth about someone, or speaking with condescending or a passive-aggressive tone, or maybe it's just moments when we lose all self-control and we lash out with anger. There are so many ways that our words can be destructive. These are the flames, small and large, that can bring such harm to those who God has made in God's own image. I believe this grieves the heart of God. So, I want to say that when we're tempted to play with those matches of destructive, destructive words, even as adults, especially as adults, let's choose to put the matches down and ask God for the grace to speak life, even when we're tempted just to set things on fire. Our words can bring encouragement and renewal. The author of James speaks about words of encouragement and renewal using the images, my favorite images, of food and water. I don't know about you, but there's nothing more encouraging than a good, hearty meal. Some of you know that I have a bit of a love affair with Luby's Cafeteria and other cafeterias like Luby's. There's just something about the meatloaf and the fried okra that reminds me of Grandma's house. Mmm. I love it. The Oreo cheesecake and the cup of coffee to finish it all off. That is what I can call hospitality. It reminds me of that warm feeling of home. James teaches us that our words cannot be both sweet as fresh water and salty as the ocean. We are called to honor God with the way we speak to one another, speaking words that bring encouragement, speaking words that are filled with the spirit of hospitality that sets a table of welcome for all, that has patience to bear with one another in difficult moments, and has a place for us, a place that is filled with the warmth of love. This has been a hard week to see the events that are unfolding in the Middle East. I cannot begin to imagine what it must feel like to, to be so unsafe, to feel so unwelcomed in your own country, in your own home, that you're willing to cling to the side of an airplane as it departs the runway. Friends, there, are, of course, are no easy answers to the complexities of this particular conflict of which we speak in Afghanistan. And we pray for God to bring peace to our world and to continue to enlarge our hearts to be a people of extravagant welcome in a number of ways. And how grateful I am to be a part of this church that very statedly is welcoming to the refugee, giving to those without a community, a place to belong. We are church for all people, 
with more than enough love to go around. And one of those ways that we can keep that well filled with more than enough love is by speaking words that encourage and bring healing. Words that feed our souls. Mother Teresa said, kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. You never know the blessing that you might impart when you speak words of encouragement to someone. I dare you to try it. I dare you to try it. Give someone a compliment, even when you don't feel like giving away compliments. Let someone know how thankful you are for them, even when you don't feel like those around you are thankful for you. There, there's a time for critique. Those are the words that we spoke about earlier, words that bring direction when they're spoken with love. But too often we find ourselves not speaking truth in love. And I think sometimes we just need to take a vacation from being direction givers. And just, and just be people who speak words that edify one another. Words that build up, words that refresh and show very clearly God's love. Today we were blessed to hear Valencia who sang the familiar hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And its lyrics bear a repeat. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God, our creator, family, all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. With God's help, we indeed can be peacemakers in the ways that we offer direction one to another. We can be peacemakers when we avoid words that are hurtful and destructive. And we can be peacemakers when we speak words that bring healing and life to one another. So let's make that our solemn vow today. To take each moment and live each moment in peace, speaking the words of peace eternally. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How can our tongues speak peace? How can our tongues bring life? Our tongues can pray. Even when we are at a loss for words, we can pray in the most simplest way. Uh, there's a regular prayer and response we do here at Westbury UMC and in many churches where the leader says, Lord, in your mercy, and we all respond, hear our prayer. But this is something you can do simply by yourself. When you don't know what to say, Simply hold an image, a person, even an emotion. Hold that to God and say, Lord, in your mercy, hear my prayer. But today we're going to pray together as the body of Christ, as the family of God. Um, and I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you will reply wherever you are, hear our prayer, knowing that you are responding with so many others, so many places. 
Let us pray together. Almighty God, our faith is being tested this week. As we see unforgettable images emerging from Afghanistan, wondering about the sacrifices made by service men and service women, baffling at the cost of 20 years, and we search for good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Then our minds flash to Haiti, an island nation embroiled in political unrest, and then struck by quaking earth, pouring rain, and howling wind. And again we pray and ask, how will good emerge? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the stories that slip off the front page, the fires that continue to consume our world, both in the Western United States and in Europe, the civil war that grips Ethiopia and the Tigray region, and the small crises that keep us from restful sleep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we draw closer to our own homes, we pray for the rise in COVID cases, for those hospitalized, for those compromised, that you would heal and strengthen the breath in their lungs and their bodies. And for the medical workers who have tirelessly worked for a year and a half, wondering when this will end, we ask that their tears and exhaustion be our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. What can our tongues do but pray? And as we pray, we will listen, we will watch for how you may be moving and inviting us into your healing work. Help us see, help us witness, and help us act. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we, as your children, will pray as the Lord Jesus has taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.
I invite you to join me in a responsive sending forth as we enter another week together as the body of Christ here at Westbury UMC. Go forth from this place and imitate the Holy One in all you do. We will live with love, speak with kindness, touch with gentleness, walk with humbleness, and build up the kingdom of God. Go forth into the world and live in love as Christ has lived in and through you. Amen.